in today's video, we're going to be making the skirt for Sarah Sanderson from Hocus Pocus. We're also going to be making her pouch and her bloomers. To make Sarah's skirt, I'm going to be using Simplicity 8720. This is their unofficial Sanderson sister pattern, and I'm going to be using View C for Sarah. Now, this is unofficial, and it's also not completely accurate to her movie costume, but I'm going to be doing the best I can, so my costume is not going to be accurate, but hopefully it will still look close enough in the end. Since I'm going to be making my own waistband for the skirt instead of folding over the top of the skirt pieces, I'm going to cut the pattern at the waistline marking, and I'm also going to shorten the pattern some since it's a bit long on me. I cut all of the skirt pieces out of different colors of matte satin, and then surged all of the edges to keep them from fraying. The front panel I cut out of a very pale pink, the side panels are cut out of gold fabric, and then I cut four panels out of the dark purple. So all four of the purple panels together along the side seams, except for the center front. Sew the rest of the panels together, but only partially, since Sarah has these large slits in her skirt. Then we're going to take the seam allowance and fold it over to create a rolled hem all along the edge, folding over the seam allowance along the seam, and now we're going to sew it in place to completely finish the raw edge. I probably didn't need to serge these portions, but I was worried about the fabric fraying while I was manipulating it so much. So I'm glad I did it on my skirt, but it may not be necessary for yours. Here is what the skirt looks like so far, after all of the panels have been hemmed. For the red portion of Sarah's skirt, I couldn't find any lace fabric that was close enough to what I needed, so I purchased a fringed scarf off of Amazon, folded it in half, and sewed it to the waistband, covering the pink and gold panels. I cut the bustle part of the skirt instead of being two separate pieces, I cut it on the fold, this way it will be longer and will partially cover up the gold part of the skirt and not just the purple. Next, I took the bustle and surged along the top edge to keep it from fraying, and sewed a rolled hem along the curved edge. I used a white colored pencil to transfer the markings from the pattern onto the bustle. Now we're going to match the two dots together and hand tack them to create the bustling effect. Sew the top of the bustle to the top of the skirt, overlapping slightly over the gold and red fabric. The other thing that I did was I couldn't find a good image of how her pouch attached to her skirt, so I took some ribbon that was close in color to the red fabric and sewed two loops of it to the top of the skirt. The reason I sewed two is just because the ribbon was rather thin and I was worried that one loop wouldn't be strong enough. The pattern instructions call for simply turning over the top edge of the skirt to create a channel for elastic, but since Sarah's waistband is purple in the movie, I decided to make my own just by cutting a rectangle out of the purple fabric and sewing the two ends together to create a tube. Putting right sides together, sew the waistband to the top of the skirt. Fold the waistband over and sew it into place, tucking the raw edge inward. Then we're going to thread some elastic through the channel, sew the two ends together, and pull them back in. You could sew the remaining hole closed, however, I decided to keep it open in case I need to change the size of the skirt later on. And with that, Sarah's skirt is done. To make Sarah's bloomers, I'm going to be using cut sew pattern number 19, just the bloomer part of the pattern. And this I purchased a while ago. I think they've changed it so it has a larger size range now. But I was worried that they were going to be a little too small, so I did go ahead and extend the edge on both the front and the back. And I'm making them out of a thin lavender cotton. Then I surged along all of the edges to help keep them from fraying, 
and matched up the two front pieces with the two back pieces, and we're going to sew them together along the curves. The next step is to sew the front and back of the bloomers together along each of the side seams and in between the legs here. And I'm not sure if this is a problem with the pattern or if I cut it out wrong, but as you can see, the back piece is considerably longer than the front. So I'm going to have to trim that off so that they're even and kind of angle it into the rest of the bloomer. The other problem that I'm running into is that I tried them on and they are pretty low in the back. So what the pattern calls for is just folding over the top of it to create a casing for the elastic. But I think I may have to add a waistband instead. I trimmed away the edge so that it was even, resurged it, and since the edge was already surged, instead of folding it over twice to hide the raw edge, I just folded it up once and sewed all along the leg opening, leaving a space so we can insert the elastic. I couldn't find a very good image of Sarah's bloomers, so I decided to just do whatever I felt like doing, and I took some light purple cotton lace and sewed that around the leg hole, leaving a flap so that we can insert the elastic. Feed the elastic through the channel and sew the two ends together. Then we're going to pull the elastic completely into the channel and sew the hole closed, and also sew the lace into place. For the waistband of the bloomers, I cut, or more specifically ripped, a rectangle of the cotton folded it in half, and then sewed the two ends together, leaving a space in the middle for inserting the elastic later. Then I folded the waistband in half and surged along the edge to keep it from fraying. Putting right sides together, sew the waistband onto the bloomers and then top stitch along the edge. Thread elastic through the hole in the waistband and sew the two edges together. Pull the elastic into the channel, then you could sew the hole closed if you wanted to. I prefer to keep it open so that if I need to make any changes to the fit later on, it'll be easier to do so. I also sewed on this little ribbon rosette that my sister gave me ages ago to the front because I'm really bad about remembering which is the front and which is the back of garments with elastic waistbands, so this way it makes it easier for me. And to continue the look, I also sewed the rosettes onto the side seams. And with that, Sarah's bloomers are done. To make Sarah's pouch, I started by sketching out the Celtic knot design on the front of it. This is the best I could do. I couldn't find a really clear image of it, so this is probably not completely accurate. Then I traced the design onto some white paper put some tape over it to make it a bit thicker, and then used an X-Acto knife to cut it out to create a stencil. I cut a square out of some gold-colored fabric, applied some fusible interfacing to the back of it to make it a little bit thicker, then used a disappearing ink pen to trace on the design using the stencil. Now I'm going to go through and fill it in with paint I'm using the Plaid FX. It is the satin and let's see, what is the color? The color is Commander Navy. For the blue, since it's onto a yellow fabric, it's turning a little greenish. And I didn't have it fully mixed here, so it's bleeding into the fabric a little bit. So I may end up going through and cleaning up all the edges with some gold later on. I then went over with the color Bloodline for the red, and also did an outline in gold using the color Golden Hour. I cut a rectangle out of some scrap black fabric, and then pinned some bias tape to the center of it, folding the raw edges down on either side, and now we're going to sew it along the top, and along the bottom to create a casing for the tie of the pouch. Sew the black piece to the top of the gold piece, 
Then I repeated this process with some purple fabric to create the back of the pouch. Putting right sides together, so the front of the pouch to the back of the pouch, along the sides leaving the top open, then cut two pieces of some thin black fabric for the lining, the same size as the front and back, and for this one we're going to sew it around the edge, leaving a space open at the bottom so it can be turned right side out. Putting right sides together, we're going to sew the lining to the base pouch all along the opening. Turn the pouch right side out through the hole at the bottom of the lining, and then sew that hole closed. Tuck the lining back down into the pouch, and then I top stitched around the edge. I used some heavy duty thread to sew some beads onto the bottom to create this beaded fringe, but you could use a pre-made beaded fringe as well. To make the pouch able to close, I took some black ribbon and threaded it through the opening, around the corner, through the opposite channel, and back out, then tied the ends together. And I did that for the opposite side as well, around, through the other channel, and back out. This way it will gather and provide tension from both sides. And when I was running the ribbon through the channel, I found it easier to use a large darning needle and threading the ribbon through the eye, just like you would for sewing. Now we can tie the pouch to the loop of ribbon that we made in the skirt to attach it. And with that, Sarah's pouch is done. And here's what all of these pieces look like together. For more cosplay tutorial videos on making the rest of the costume, please subscribe, and thank you so much for watching!